Hello everyone, thanks for joining me on the first episode of Big Daddy J's Woodshop. Today we'll show you how to make a lamp in the style of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. We'll go step by step, show you how to make every cut, as well as some tips and tricks to make your project a little bit easier. Let's get started. <laughs> Let's start by going over some essential materials. You'll need some project wood. I'm using mahogany, but I've also made these out of oak and walnut. I'm shooting for a project that's at least an inch and a half thick. I've snagged a lamp parts kit off of Amazon. They're cheap and will have everything you need for a standard build. You'll also need some fasteners. I'm using wood glue and brad nails. I'm also going to add an extra step to my project. I'm going to cut and thread my own lamp rod. Lamp parts kits typically come with plenty of pre-threaded rod but using a solid rod looks more authentic. Let's get started with our first piece of wood. The piece of mahogany in front of me is roughly three quarters of an inch thick. I'm going to cut it and sister the two boards together to achieve my desired thickness. Let's cut two pieces, seven and a half by seven and a half. This has quickly become one of my favorite tools, the table saw. We're gonna start by adjusting our guide fence to seven and a half inches and locking it in place. Next on the to-do list, let's adjust our blade height. This will help prevent kickbacks and injuries from the blade. You're going to want to have your blade raised just a little bit taller than your project. And don't forget to check your angle as well. We want it to be as straight as possible. Now we are ready to cut. Start your table saw and let it reach its peak speed. Feed your project into the blade, keeping it tight against the fence. With a good sharp blade, it should be a smooth series of cuts. Your fence is going to be your best friend here. As long as you have it set properly, you'll be able to quickly cut your board square. For our next step, we're going to bond and clamp our two pieces of wood together. This will allow us to cut a circle of our desired thickness. Be sure to keep all of your wood grains run in the same direction. This will make your bonded board appear more seamless. It's also important to apply equal pressure on all sides while bonding. After tightening our clamps, let's let it set. Type on 2 typically takes 24 hours to cure. Now that we've allowed enough bonding time, let's get these clamps off. Our next step is to find the center. You'll need a pencil and a straight edge. Just draw a line from corner to corner, and where it meets is your center. After finding our center, we can use a compass to draw our circles out. This first circle is going to be our outer circle. With our circle traced out, we can begin to make our cut. I'm making a few relief cuts because it will help my blade stay true to the circle. An important note here, the more relief cuts you make, the more sanding you'll need to do to remove those extra grooves. I'm using a bandsaw with a 3 8 inch thick blade to make my cuts. You could go with a jigsaw in this application or a scroll saw in this application to make these very same cuts. However, due to the thickness of my circle, it would be just easier for me to use this bandsaw.
because of all of the relief cuts I did, I have to find some way to get the ridges off of the outside of my circle. Although I can do it with sanding, setting it up on my lathe and using my scraping tool is the faster choice for me. Now that we have a true circle again, I'm going to use our compass one more time to draw an inner circle that we are going to cut out. In order to make a clean interior cut, we'll need to drill a few pilot holes. The amount of holes isn't critical, but think of these as relief cuts as well. I'm using a half inch Irwin speed bore bit. When they're sharp, they're fantastic. I've now got our circle set up on the scroll saw. I'm going to use this to cut as much of the center out as possible without going outside the lines we made with our compass. If you don't have access to a scroll saw, you can go to any home store and select a large enough hole saw to get the job done for you, especially since we already have the center identified. Now that we have the interior circle cut out, let's throw it on the sander, knock off any major ridges that we may have created. With our circle complete for now, we are ready to cut the sides of the triangle. I'm setting the cut width to match the thickness of my circle, so everything looks uniform. I'm going to cut three strips out of this wood, avoiding the crack while doing it. With our strips cut and our circle done, we can now do a mock-up of what our lamp is gonna look like. With our mock-up on the table, take this moment to use a pencil and draw some guidelines as to where you want to make your cuts. Using a miter saw, we're gonna cut two of our strips at a 30 degree angle. These will act as our sides. Let's grab one of our two sides, and we're going to make a cut on the line we drew during our mock-up. We're now going to arrange our pieces back on the table again with the cuts that we've made. As you can see, one side is still very long. Take a piece of scrap wood and use it to mark out your next cut. With our intersecting point marked out, we can now take that side and make a cut to create both the cap and the side itself. We're making a small triangle cap to fit at the top. This will give us a nice flat spot to be able to drill a hole for our lamp rod. With a little bit of sanding, it's a perfect fit. 
Now that all of our cuts are made, everything's mocked up and looking good, we're now gonna use some glue and I'm gonna use my air nailer here to put everything all together. At this point in the project, it's really looking like a triangle for pool. <laughs> Man, I gotta get a game in once we get this project wrapped up. With a little persuasion, our circle fits perfectly in the center of our triangle. It's looking good. We're now going to find the center of our total overall project. This will give us the spot where we want our drill bit to land to drill the hole for our lamp rod. The best wood filler you will ever use can actually be made from the sawdust of the project you're working on itself. Just mix a little bit of wood glue and some sawdust, and bam, you've got a perfect color match wood putty. Take your time here. Accuracy is paramount. You can snag these bits pretty cheaply at Harbor Freight. They come in a few sizes, which is great. I use a smaller bit as a pilot, and then work my way up to a 3 8 or a 7 16 A 7 16 will give your lamp rod some play, but it'll make installation much easier. Now that we have all of our holes drilled, we can dry fit our lamp rod in place and make sure that all of our holes line up perfectly. From here we can also take a measurement as to how long we want our lamp stem to be. I'm also going to put on a base, so I'll have to factor that in. I've got a small piece of wood here I'm going to use as a base. I'm going to set my triangle two inches off the back, find the center, and mark it with a pencil. Now let's drill a small pilot hole. Since all of our marks will be lost by sanding, this is going to be where our lamp rod goes. Sanding can be such a tedious process, but it's essential to having a perfect finish. I'm starting with a 180 grit sandpaper here and going to eventually work my way down to a 320. Be sure to get each of your sides with the sander. It's paramount for making everything look as uniform as possible. To add a little extra visual appeal to my base, I'm going to take it and put it through the router using a 3 8 round over bit. I'm only going to route three of the four sides on this and leave the back open. I'm going to go over with my 320 grit sandpaper one more time to make sure that all the edges are cleaned up after routing and to also give it one more nice uniform sanding. You know the drill here, take your time. Now's your chance to really focus in and get everything nice, sanded, and even. Get your sides, the front, the back, and even on the interior of the triangle where you can. 
Now's the time to really make it look good. Using a three quarter inch Forstner bit, we're gonna drill a small recess in both sides of this base. This will give us a spot for our lamp lock nuts to tightly hold the base. Now that we have our recesses made with our Forzner bit, I'm going to take this paddle bit here and drill a 3 8 inch hole for our lamp rod. With the holes drilled, things are looking great. I just dry fitted my lamp rod into the base to make sure I'd have enough threads to be able to recess my lock nuts into the base. Before we stain, it's important to use tack cloth to wipe down your project and get all the dust off. I've selected a nice light stain to complement the grain on my mahogany wood here. The key to having a nice consistent stain is to do long strokes, long straight strokes when you are applying the stain. Let it sit for a few minutes and then to wipe off the excess. I love this Minwax Semi-Gloss Spray-On Polyurethane. It does such a fantastic job laying evenly. I'm gonna do the base and then I'm gonna do the triangle with several coats. In between each coat, I'm gonna do a light sand. We are now ready to anchor our lamp rod to the base. The first thing we need to do is set our lamp rod back into our base and mark on the inside of the recesses where our nut needs to sit. Now that we've got a good solid mark, let's pull the lamp rod out and then thread a nut down the rod to where it meets our mark. Go ahead and reinsert your rod into the base. Put a nut on the bottom and then using a wrench and a socket, tighten the whole thing together.
With our base nice and tight, we can now slide our triangle over the lamp rod. It may need a little bit of persuasion, but you built it solid, so don't be scared. Using a tape measure, we'll double check for accuracy before putting our couple brad nails in the bottom. This next part's pretty simple, and since most parts kits come with the same items, we can go through this one pretty quickly. We're first gonna fish our wire through our lamp rod, and then we are going to go nut, lock washer, harp holder, lock washer, nut, in that order, and then we can tighten everything down. Your next step is to thread your lamp holder base onto the lamp rod. Then tighten your set screw. After tightening your set screw, a lot of people like to put a knot in the top of your wire to keep your wires from moving in the event that your cord gets pulled. We are getting close folks. Although your wire is typically pre-stripped, I like to strip another quarter inch off of the jacketing so I can bend hooks to wrap around the screws. When wiring, your silver screw will be your neutral and your gold screw will be your hot. Get these ones nice and tight. Thankfully, if you get them mixed up, on a two wire lamp it won't matter. Your lamp will still light. Your final step is just to slide the cover over the top and snap it into place. What a beautiful lamp. Thank you all for joining me today. We'll cover laser engraving and rod threading in future videos. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. We have so much planned upcoming and you won't want to miss it. Also, check out our links posted below for a few of the products that help make this one happen. Thanks again. Until next time, stay sweeping sawdust.